Okay guys, so Fida is back, Apple released Final Cut Pro 10 for the Mac. I'm going to be doing my little review on it. Let me first start off by saying this is a totally different redesign from the previous model, Final Cut Pro 7. This Final Cut aims more towards the digital videographer and is missing out on a few key professional things. Now Apple has promised to include these in future updates. Now for me, this is a perfect, perfect upgrade because I came from iMovie 11. The interface is very similar and therefore very easy to learn. Let's go ahead and get started on this review. Now, this new Final Cut Pro is finally 64-bit, which means it's going to be able to operate on multiple cores and use more than 3 gigabytes of RAM. This is a huge upgrade for speed, and it really helps out in a lot of professional video editing um, scenarios. So the first thing you'll see whenever you open this up is a whole diff bunch of different windows. Now, the top left window is where you're going to find all of your events and then your project is going to be down below that in the timeline. You go up to file and you create a new event. Basically events are where you store the media and the projects is where you construct the media. So you can go up, go up and choose new, new event or new project. You can easily switch between projects in the bottom left hand corner. So if we go ahead and drag down a, a clip we see that it starts rendering in the background. Now when it's rendering you can view but it's not going to be the, the smoothest experience. Whenever you start viewing, it pauses the rendering until you stop. A guy like me, I would highly suggest with a Core 2 Duo, just wait for it all to render out, then start editing. If you choose this item, you'll be able to select different things such as trimming, uh, the blade tool which is uh, cutting or splitting uh, clips in half, and a lot more, more, more things. Now this is a really cool feature as well. If you have a clip selected and you choose balance color, it balances the color for you. You can also customize the color straight in here with your blacks, whites, uh, and, and everything else. Now further to the right you see a bunch of different tabs. Now these options on the far left are effects. Now the effects in here are very good but not as good as expected for a $300 price range. You can also choose audio effects. If you go over to photos, you can choose photos from your iPhoto library or photo booth. If you go over to music, you can choose a wide variety of iLife um, audio effects or you can choose things from your iTunes library. Now to the right of that are transitions. I'm not highly impressed by these transitions, uh, very iMovie-esque and um, if a little further to the right is the text. Now I do like the text in most cases, uh, in all of these cases if you go ahead and uh, press the spacebar you can view them live. Uh, so you just want to go ahead and drag it over on top of the clip that you want the text to be on. Then you can edit them further uh, once you have it there. Now if you choose this, this is backgrounds. So you can choose uh, different backgrounds. Once again I wasn't too impressed. Very similar to iMovie. Uh, and then the final right thing is themes. Now themes are basically a bunch of different transition, background, things like that that are uh, by default that you can choose and it just makes editing easier. If at any time you have an, uh, sele a clip selected and you go over and choose the eye, eye for inspector, you can choose a lot of different general settings such as stabilization, crop, um, rolling shutter, and a lot more things with audio and video. You can also go uh, and choose info and you, cho you can look at all of your duration, frame rate, uh, your size and everything about the clip. So I'll go ahead and get out of that. Next in the bottom left of the viewing window if you choose this button you're going to be able to resize your clip which is great for uh, if you have multiple clips in the window. If you choose the one next to that you're going to be able to crop your clip. You have pretty much default crop settings. You can do Ken Burns. You can just basically crop it. And you can do a lot more things. If you choose the setting to the far right you're able to distort in my opinion, this isn't the most helpful of settings, but it is great that they included it. Now overall, I am very impressed by Final Cut Pro 10. I know a lot of professional videographers are giving it very bad ratings. Now for me, Final Cut Pro is perfect. All my videos are digital based, and I'm upgrading from iMovie. Be sure and check out my Twitter account down below. If you like this video, be sure and hit that thumbs up button. And yes, yeah, bit it guys, and thanks for watching.